Hi everyone, it's Tarnished Treasures and I am showing you my new dress. I picked this up at Goodwill last weekend and it's got my favorite sleeve. I also picked up a few things at a different thrift store. I got this lampshade for $4. I really love a black lampshade and I would guess that this one is vintage with its construction and look. I couldn't pass it up. It just had the most unique texture and pattern to it and on the inside it's gold. So I have no clue what lamp I can use this on. I'm going to walk around the house and see what room it makes sense in and if the proportions work with anything I have. And if they don't, I will save it until I find the perfect lamp. I also picked up two mother of pearl handled things. I picked up this piece. Um, this one's been at the store for a long time and I'm not exactly sure what it is. I do believe I could use it as a seam ripper and maybe that's what it is or maybe it's not. Um, but it, if, if it is a seam ripper, I'm gonna stick that with my vintage and antique um, sewing notions and tools and I can definitely use it as well. And then look what I found. If you had watched my recent thrift haul, I talked about how I had put a long handled sterling spoon and what I called like a knife sharpener, which it might not be, with a pearl handle on the counter to purchase. And when I went to pay, this was missing. So I described what it looked like. I looked around the store, I couldn't find it. And I went back um, at least a week later, if not more than a week later. And he pulled it out from behind the counter and I said, okay, where was it? He said it was shoved in a pile of fabric in the back of the store, which means someone clearly picked this up in the hour that I was there and hid it. I don't know why, I have no clue. But he, he said when he lifted up that pile of fabric and the spell on the floor, he looked at it, he said, that must be what she was looking for. So I found it, $3. I knew it would pop up. <laughs> I don't know why somebody hid it though. So those are my recent treasures. I polished up the silver, so that polished up nice. I don't see any markings on it though. And we've got, um, I did soap and water and a toothbrush on the handle. Looks like there was probably a repair that has been fixed. Sorry, what are we focusing on? And um, sanding off that rust will be a job for another day, but I really wanted this for my picture because I thought the height would be perfect with that pearl handle. So I'm so happy that John found it. While I was at the store, I was also looking for another pitcher because this one is starting to get very full. There we go. I tried the lampshade on this lamp and I actually think that the proportion works well. Now it's down low, so it's hard to see the pink glass, but if it were up a little bit higher, I think it would be the perfect shade. So it's gonna live here for a little bit and I'm glad I picked that up for a few dollars. My husband said he saw a cicada that emerged from its shell this morning at the bus stop. So here I am at the bus stop. I don't, I don't see any cicadas. I don't see any that look like this. And this is the only shell casing that there is. That's crazy to think that those big old bugs come out of that small shell. I'm searching, I can't find them. I know some people say they come out at night more. Jackpot, here's three more. <laughs> oh, look at this one. This one literally was attached to the step and emerged. I'm currently taking a ceramics course with my friend and coworker, and it's a lot of work each week. They get the assignment on Monday and have to turn everything in by Wednesday and Friday. So I did a project or a piece at school and it was a little ambitious. <laughs> and I found out that I could probably use that for next week's work. So I brought home some clay and some tools and I downscaled my project for this week. So we had to make texture tools. And here is one. This one makes an awesome stamp. What was I that? tested them all out. Yeah, that, that one. And then, um, let's see, I made them double-ended. Yeah, and that one's... Double. Yeah, that looks good. And then the mm -hmm. holes, and then this, I think, mm -hmm. is my... That one's my favorite. Yeah, it's my favorite, too. They're really crisp. Yeah. So then we had to we had to make lots of texture tools. We had to make a texture bin of objects to press into clay. I have to make a Google Slide doc showing all of my process. Then I had to make 
nine tiles, so they're drying at school, that tried out my different stamps and textures. And then I had to make a project that was slab and texture based. So I decided to make a candle holder um, and I made a honeycomb pattern using an unsharpened angular pencil. It's like my go-to trick. And then I've got my candle and you do have to make things at least 10% bigger because they shrink. So I used my candle to make that hole bigger. So even if it shrinks, it'll fit. And honestly, if it's a little too much, I could just shave the candle down, so no big deal. And then we've got a little ring for your finger. And then I decided to put a little bee on there. And then when I fire this, I wanna get some amber glass and um, let the glass flow like honey and the beeswax. So that is all done and it just has to dry. So now I have to take pictures of it and put that Google slideshow together. But I thought you'd like to see what I was working on. And then my daughter made her own texture stamp that I'm gonna take. And I'm making oh. tools. Oh this my is gosh. gonna be a screwdriver and this is a hammer. Let me see that hammer. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. <laughs> what are you gonna do with the mini tools? Give them to my dolls. Oh, that's a great idea. I had to work from home today and uh, finished at three. And then I have been um, working in the garden for three hours. So on Mother's Day, we got uh, vegetables and some plants. I still needed some white geraniums to fill in the rest of the pots. So I filled in this pot. Then I came over here and had to tackle that humongous parsley because it was shading the radishes. Um, and I think it had kind of grown into separate sections or plants. So I've got a big section inside to dry, and then this is cut down just a, well, just a little, cut down a lot, but I'm assuming it's just gonna come right back since it was doing so well so early. I got this plant filled. It's watered underneath, but then I topped it off with some soil, so that's why it looks a little dry, but it's definitely wet down low. And we have cucumbers, basil, cherry tomatoes, celebrities, brandy wines, bell peppers. Um, we're gonna do squash and zucchini from seed. For the past few years, we have been doing everything from um, seed here at the house, but we just, we had more time other years. And it's not like we don't have time now, but there's other projects we wanna work on. And I think all the plants, vegetables, everything came to $36 at the local nursery and I had taught the students in the past. So I really like to support them. I didn't think that was like a lot of money to save ourselves a lot of time. Um, and Brussels sprouts we're gonna try new this year in the garden. This was a Mother's Day present from my son and we're gonna do marigolds in between the cucumber plants. Last year, the cucumber plants, a lot of people around here got some type of fungus. So I only had like 10 cucumbers, which was sad because that's my favorite. The other thing I did is there were some um, irises that were really close to the edge here. So I dug those up and moved them back. That way when they bloom, we don't run over them with a car. I got a new rosemary plant and I got that because the one was getting spots on it, but I plant it here in the front because um, it's kind of convenient for me to just come out and pluck some. and. I do have my herbs in the back too, but then it's kind of crowded in there. So that's why I planted out front. And then I chopped the mums down because they were coming up really well. And someone told me a while ago that if you trim them in the summer, then they will bloom in the fall. And uh, I've just chopped them down like that after someone told me that and it's worked every year. And I've transplanted some um, of the muscari and the daffodil bulbs because I talked about in the other video how I want to have some um, oh goodness, uh, flagstone right here. And I had daffodils and hosta and my poppies and everything right here. So I dug it up, I scooched stuff over, I trimmed stuff, hostas moved. I don't know if it's gonna look good or if it's spaced out. I mean, honestly, actually the hostas are all in a row. Um, and every once in a while we divide them so they don't get overwhelming. So now the plan is I just have to get some flagstone and I did transplant the poppy. Oh, I think it'll be okay. I gave it a good soak. It's kind of drooping just a tad, but I took up so much dirt when I moved it over. I do think it'll be fine. 
Um, and then that way we can have a little path right there. We're about to dry up all of this parsley. It smells really good. Parsley is in, and I'll link a video in the description box of how I dry my herbs. It's good for like basil, parsley. Um, what else do I do? Mint. Um, and I'm going to have some decaf. All of that parsley is dry, and then you just crunch it up. I stopped at a garden center um, to see if they had flagstones, and they actually sell them by the pound for a quarter. So I spent $17. I don't think this will be enough, um, but I'm gonna take it home and then I can estimate because I'd rather buy less and come back. And I got a mix um, of, let's see what they call it, colonial lilac and colonial gray. So there's definitely a purple feel, which I love for the front of the house. And then this piece here must be a similar stone. that has got some green and purple, like a slate. We're not having a stick war. I did not get enough, but I would have rather um, gotten less and then go back and get more than have too much. Now I can see, maybe I'll make note about like one, two, three. Probably need a little bit less than I originally got, which would be nice that this project will only cost less than $40. And I liked the fact that it adds some interest picked up my glue so I have glued this it is sitting here to dry and I think that I've got them pretty even I did not pull out the level though <laughs> and I picked that placement originally I was thinking of having them closer but where I have placed them it's pretty bare underneath so I'm not blocking any of that cool stenciling and then there's a little pencil scribble under there I love it Tonight I'm making hot sausages and green peppers. And the other day I dried some parsley and I made a little Italian blend mix. So I had some basil left over uh, that I dried from last year. And I added garlic powder and oregano and my fresh dried parsley just to this um, old basil bottle. I should probably take the label off, but I know what it is. Um, and I didn't put onions in there just because onions have a little, um, they have more carbs than other vegetables. So uh, just peppers and the sausages. And then I forgot to share the other day, I made meat sauce and spaghetti squash. So we have a little bit left over and I'm going to heat that up for the kids. I am home from work and I have changed into the other thing that I picked up at the Goodwill. It is this shirt from Old Navy and I love this material. It's lightweight with these really pretty roses. And we're gonna go to the carnival, so I think this will be nice for the weather. I purchased this iris last year at Lowe's because it's one of my favorite purple colors. So I'm excited to see that about to open. And then look at this, it's just stunning. So tonight there is a carnival outside. So they pandemic appropriate carnival. So I think I'm gonna get the kids off of the school bus and head up there as a family tonight. I'll be looking forward to that. So I think that I will just leave you here with a shot of the roses. And I hope everybody has a great weekend. Bye.